Alrighty, welcome to another eight-player draft here on Magic Online. We're drafting some vintage cube, as always. And uh, ooh, we got a Mox Pearl. All right, we're slamming this. This is Alpha Frog's cube. It's officially on Magic Online, so I've really been enjoying getting to draft it in the queues. And we're taking a Mox Pearl over Birds, Memory Lapse, and Dillion Click. Yeah, this is obviously more than fine. And ooh, was that a Time Twister I see? That it is, that it is. It's funny, for a long time, Time Twister was like, ah, uh, kind of the fake piece of the power nine. Of course, it's the Lotus and the Ancestral and the Time Walk and the Five Moxes, but maybe we should have Time Vault or Library of Alexandria as the ninth one. I actually think in Cube, Time Twister has gotten much, much better. There's a couple reasons for that. One is that I think Combo is a little bit better supported with like Lion's Eye Diamond, Underworld Breach, these cards getting better. And then cards like uh, Exploration being added, Fast Bond, of course, was in before, but still, that kind of thing. And then the other is this new angle, and this is a really big one, of Orcish Bowmasters, Hole Breacher, and then Leovold and Narset, all that punish your opponent for drawing extra cards. So I think, especially given that I started with a Mox Pearl, I'm happy to take Time Twister over Jace and Skull Clamp, and then maybe Chromatic Star will wheel, you never know. Okay, so this pack has some pretty good stuff. It's got Miscalculation and it's got Flooded Strand. These are the two cards I'm looking at. Oh, one more reason I think Time Twister has gotten better. Claren Academy has gotten better. There's a lot more cheap artifacts in the cube now and Academy Time Twister is a very strong combo. So back to the question at hand. Flooded Strand versus Miscalculation. I think Miscalc's better than Fire Ice, especially early. And because I don't know that I'm playing red yet. I do have a Mox Pearl, which makes Flooded Strand even a little more appealing. I think I'm going to take the Strand. I like Miscalculation a lot, but I, I like On Color Fetches a lot too. Oh man, Atroxa and Coveted Jewel. Also like Talisman, I guess, or him and Thraven Inspector. So this is a tough one because I love Atroxa. I tend to not pass Atroxa much, but I think Coveted Jewel is also really good. I think Atroxa is enough better. There's a lot of cards that work with Atroxa. We'll have to find... Uh, Oath of Druids or Reanimate stuff, Flash would be ideal as well. So there, there's a lot of options to make this Atroxa work. So it's not impossible to just cast Atroxa. That is one of the things I like about Atroxa's seven mana is, you know, it's not nothing, but like Gristlebrand's barely castable. Like maybe if you're mono black and or close to it and have like a dark ritual, you can like every now and then cast a Gristlebrand. Atroxa, Atroxa you can actually just cast because... Adding four different colors of mana is just not that hard once you're at seven mana. This pack, I think I'm just going to take Memory Jar here. Sylvan Library is okay. Thirst is just okay. And don't really want any of these fair cards. Memory Jar goes nicely with Time Twister, as in if I pick up a whole Breacher or a, uh, you know, any of the like Orcish Bowmasters type stuff. Jar doesn't actually work that well with Narset or Leovold because they don't really get cards from the Jar that much anyway. But I'd be really happy if I picked up any of the, the draw seven punishers. So having two draw sevens already is nice. And just in like generally combo decks, jar is great. Wow, that's a late remand. I'm going to take it over from the Catacombs and Duress. Two pretty good black cards in the pack, but remand is awesome. So we'll be taking that one. Remand is exactly what I'm looking for in basically any deck. <laughs> like, it's two mana, it replaces itself, and while it does it, it delays whatever spell they were trying to play. This pack's got an Indotha Triome, which would help with casting Atroxa for sure. Talisman of Unity also actually would help with casting Atroxa. God the Shrine, the same. Uh, I think I'm going to take Talisman here. I like Talismans. I did just pass Crucible, but... I'm not going to take a Zern Orb here, and I think just taking the Talisman to go with uh, the general ramp strategy is good. Oh, wow. That's a late Emrakul. There's also Titania, Monster Manual, Oracle of Moldai is kind of nice with the draw sevens, and I picked up a green-white Talisman. I am tempted just to take Emrakul and figure out something to do with Emrakul, because I've got a lot of uh, draw stuff. Let's just take the Emrakul here. I feel like there's a lot that you can end up doing. Oh, wow, Birds of Paradise Wield? Hmm. I'm probably going to take the Birds. I think Birds is enough better than the rest of these cards that I'm fine taking Birds and maybe 
drafting like blue green or something along those lines. Birds also somewhat opens the door for natural order. Not quite there yet. I knew Chromatic Star was going to wheel. I just think people weren't going to realize how good that card was. I'm going to take that over a Seeker's Chariot though. I like a Seeker's Chariot well enough, but Chromatic Star is nice. It's awesome with Academy. It's awesome with Tinker or Urza, any of the artifact payoffs. Also, it's another way I could be casting Atroxa. And it's kind of funny. It's a way to store a card before casting a draw seven. Imagine turn one land Chromatic Star, turn two land Mox Time Twister. It's like you just get a free card later. So that's kind of nice. We've got this Emrakul here, which I don't know that I'm going to do something with it, but as much as I love Oracle of Moldiah, and I you know, have been a huge fan of that card in the past, I think it's a lot worse now. Oh, there's a Natural Order. Okay. That's that's actually totally fine. I think Natural Order over like Battle Ball and, and uh, some other stuff like that, like Nurturing Peatland, whatever. Okay, I don't actually know if I want Crater Hoof. I almost think I think just Green White Land would be better. I don't think I want Thraven Inspector either. I do know I have Natural Order, though. No, I should take the Crater Hoof. If I've got Natural Order, and now I take Voice of Resurgence as a card that can sacrifice to Natural Order, I think having uh, having Crater Hoof and Atroxa as the two targets kind of covers all your bases. Sure, I'll take Fauna Shaman now. Look, I don't normally go into green when I have a bunch of Time Twister type stuff, like green with elves, but Natural Order Atroxa is really nice. So I think... Natural order is enough of a temptation that I, I don't mind. Oh, another mox. Lucky me. All right, well, slam the mox and probably have the choice of, like, questing beast or questing druid. They're questing for each other. I think, like, Teferi's going to get taken. Spellseeker is going to get taken. Like, Bitter Triumph. I, I don't know. Zealous Conscripts, Palantir. But I'm, of course, thrilled to get a mox. And I would still go for Teleran Academy. Teleran Academy, natural order. Don't often fight side by side, but they could here. Mm. This pack is a big step down. There's a Dak fade in, but I don't have any red yet, and I don't really have a strong reason to want to add red. There's a Gitaxian Probe is always fine. Generous Ent could be good here. I might just take Dismember, though. This color combination tends to not have a ton of removal, so getting a one-mana removal spell, a colorless removal spell, is pretty nice. So I'll take Dismember here. I like Talisman of Unity here, though. Indotha Triumph still would have been kind of nice, given the, where we ended up. And still could go, obviously, for like a Hole Breacher or a Bowmasters. More green creatures, like Sylvan uh, Karyatid would be perfect for this kind of deck. Flash would be definitely something I'm interested in. Same with Fast Bond or Exploration. So we've got a lot of ways we can go here. Oh, there's an Urza? Yeah, we'll take Urza. This is looking like an excellent Urza deck. Candelabra almost always uh, has the possibility of wheeling. There's also Reckoner Bank Buster. Maybe Green Suns. Maybe Shallow Grave. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see what comes back. But I'm happy with Urza. With Double Mox, Chromatic Star, Talisman. This looks like a solid Urza deck. Urza Time Twister is also great. Just Time Twister basically gives you a, somewhat of a win condition for any deck that can generate a lot of mana. And... The, what I like about it is it's great when you can make 10 mana, but it's also great when you, like, mold a 5 and just keep a hand of, like, you know, two land Mox Time Twister and just all of a sudden you've unmulliganed yourself. So it's great on a lot of mana or when you're low on resources, which I, I like that combo. Oh, wow. There's a Mana Drain and a Wheel of Fortune. Well, as much as I like Wheel, going into another color when there's an excellent blue card here does not make much sense. So Slam Mana Drain, if we're really lucky, Sensei's top might find its way back to us. So now we've got Remand and Mana Drain. We're also not a lock to play Natural Order here, of course, though I think having Birds of Paradise and Natural Order and Atrox is already making me pretty tempted to do so. A blue-green land would be pretty nice too. I wouldn't mind that. We've got a Flooded Strand here, and that would be nice if that could tap for those. Um, what else we got here? Well... Huh. So on the one hand, there's World Spine Worm, which I don't really want a natural order for. I don't think I would even, I would play it for that purpose, but it taking it would make Flash busted in our deck. Though Flash is already pretty good with Atroxa and can be good with Crater Hoof. The, the Hoof doesn't stick around, but you get the trigger. So if you have four creatures in play, you, you Flash and Hoof, it's two mana. I'll give all your creatures plus four, plus four, and trample. I think I gotta take Pentad Prism, though. It's fantastic with Urza. This deck's playing at least two and a half colors. 
you know, I guess Voice is the only white card, but it also could definitely help cast an early Atroxa. It's possible World Spine wheels, though not particularly likely. I just think Pentad Prism is generally pretty good, and once you ha add in, like, Urza or playing lots of colors or draw sevens, then it becomes very, very good. Oh, there's the Flash. Well, I'm still going to take Flash. Now I really hope World Spine Worm wheels. Taking Flash over Bloodstained Mire. Flash Atrox is fantastic, so I'll take this over Sail into the West, Bloodstained Mire, GTA. Not even that, that good for me. Haven't gotten past any um, other mana dorks. Haven't even really seen them. Like Noble Hierarch would be the highest on my list. But Ignoble Hierarch would also still be fine and wouldn't be the most excited about the mono green dorks. But I would still potentially want to play them. Okay, so here we've got Portal to Frexia, which we don't currently have combos with, but is the best tinker target. We have Dried of the Elysian Grove, which is kind of nice with the draw sevens. We have Rafine's Tower, which makes Flooded Strand into black mana. That doesn't actually look that interesting. I don't think I want Dark Confront in this deck either. I've played Bob Emrakul before. It worked about how you'd expect. I could take Kinan and Spec on uh, Basalt Monolith. It also works with Birds and the Moxes. Talisman actually adds extra mana with Chromatic Star too. Yeah, I'll take Kinan as like a high upside pick. The Dried of the Elysian Grove is just not that good, I don't think, so missing out on that isn't that big of a deal. I don't really want to play this Fauna Shaman either, to be honest. Though I guess Flash makes Fauna Shaman a little better. Okay, maybe you get maybe you get rescued. Alright, what else do we got here? Um Mana Confluence is fine, but I might just take Knight of Autumn. Knight of Autumn is a card I can sack to natural order, which this deck's a little short on. And I feel like my mana is not going to be so bad that I need mana confluence. I like Samwise too, but this isn't really a Samwise deck. Still not sure about the Crater Hoof, but I think it's probably worth playing. The Emrakul right now is not doing anything for us. Emrakul could be good if I get Basalt Monolith. It's a good way to win with Kin and Basalt Monolith. You just make, you know, infinite mana, cast Emrakul, and you win the game. Mm, really would like that World Spine Worm to wheel. I'm the only person with Flash, so unless we've got haters and doubters, I think I should probably wheel it. I suppose someone could take it for sneak attack purposes. Okay, so the Questing Beast didn't come back. The Questing Druid did. I think I'm just going to take Razor Verge Thicket. A green-white land is pretty good for me. I don't really want to play red cards in my deck if I can avoid it. Like, I think my mana is probably fine, even as is. As long as I don't add more colors to the mix. Because I don't really have black. I've got an Atroxa and a Dismember. Both of which don't really even require black sources to be in my deck to be good. And I have Mox Jet and Pentad Prism so, and Birds. So every now and then I'll get a free black source off that. And then otherwise I'm basically green-blue. Maybe splashing Night of Autumn and Voice of Resurgence to, make, to power up Natural Order. With Flooded Strand and Razor Verge Thicket making it, and Mox Pearl making it, pretty cheap to do so. So Sacred Foundry and Waterlogged Grove came back. I don't really want Staff of the Storyteller. Uh, I don't have enough tokens to make that. I could take Sacred Foundry in case I do splash the red. I don't really like Waterlogged Grove that much. On the other hand, it is a blue-green land, so I guess I should probably just take the blue-green land. Bankbuster came back. I will take that. Uh, was this the World Spine Worm pack? It might have been. Yeah, I think World Spine is not coming back to me today. That's okay. I'll take Fiery Islet as well. Oh, wait, this was the World Spine Worm pack and Fire Covenant didn't get taken? I could also take Zerda in case I hit Grim Monolith. I don't think I even want Hanger back in this deck, so let's just take Zerda just in case. I don't really want Fiery Islet in my deck that much either. Now, if we get. Uh, Grim Monolith or Basalt Monolith. Zerda goes infinite with both. Kinnon with Basalt, and that would be a reason to potentially play Emrakul in the deck. All right. Well, I like what we're how this is going. We've opened two Moxes. We have Flash with Atroxa. No World Spine, sadly. We have uh, an Urza, and we have a bunch of good early plays. We also have Mana Drain and Remand, so... Really no complaints here. We have a couple different things that, you know, could work out. So we've got, like, the Zerda Kinnon and then Hope for Monolith of various types plan. <laughs> we've got Black Lotus again. And there's a Talarian Academy. 
How brutal. I guess I'm going to take Lotus and not wheel Academy, but I will wheel Oriok Salvagers. Almost assuredly. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be shocked if Salvagers didn't wheel. Well, there's only so much I can say when I open Black Lotus. Uh, so, yeah. All right. We've got... We've got some plans here. So no Academy, but Lotus is a fine, fine recompense. And maybe, you know, maybe I run the Zerda, Emrakul, Kinnon thing. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do have the Knight of Autumn and Voice of Resurgence and Fauna Shaman of the Natural Order. Honestly, there's a lot of different ways this could go now. Here we have Mind Twist. Library of Alexandria, Show and Tell, Teferi. This isn't the worst Show and Tell deck, but honestly, Show and Tell Emrakul just doesn't win that often. I think I'm just going to take Library of Alexandria. This is a sick Library of Alexandria deck. Having all these zeros means you can just library and draw a bunch of cards and still not even really be behind because you can just play a Mox and all of a sudden it's like you're back on curve. So I'm happy enough just taking that. If Let's see. If, if the Natural Order stuff doesn't work out, I guess we're pretty short on cards then. If if we're not playing Natural Order or Kinnon or Zerda, I don't think it will be difficult to find ways to win here. I could use one more kind of meaty f card to flash in, like an Atali or Archon of Cruelty, though. Archon of Cruelty is not that good if you can't follow it up by reanimating it. Mm, yeah, that World Spine would have been nice. I guess knowing I would have gotten, was going to get past Flash, I would have taken a Pented Prism or World Spine over Pented Prism, but. Draft is easier if you know what's coming. Okay, there's Basalt Monolith. I think I just have to take it now. Adding Basalt Monolith adds basically a couple different combos. So it makes both Kinnon and Zerda go infinite in terms of mana, which means I can just cast Emrakul and win, or I can use Urza and spin infinite times, or I can crack Jar and hope to get there. But I'm going to take Basalt Monolith. I just can't risk someone else taking it, even if I'm giving up like a Time Warp or whatever. But easy Basalt Monolith. Oh, and I could have followed up with Through the Breach. Now I kind of wish I had taken that Sacred Foundry, but, eh, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. So Through the Breach mean, means Emrakul is all of a sudden a win. Through the Breach Atrox is also great. And, you know, Through the Breach Crater Hoof is not that bad either. Passing up another Talisman. I guess I would play Delighted Halfling in this deck, and it would be good in this deck. Hmm. Delighted Halfling. I've got all these Moxes and stuff. Let's just take the Through the Breach. Just having more cards that win the game is pretty nice. Because this deck, I think, uh, it's going to have tons of mana. It's got double mox lotus. I kind of wonder how good is this natural order. Like, Because right now we're at 30 cards, so we add 10 lands. We end up on 14, basically 16 land plus lotus and all these other things. So we're like fine now. But let's say I get a couple more cards that support the like Breach Flash Urza plan. Then I'm going to have to cut cards, and at that point, maybe I cut the Natural Order stuff. All right, so there's Exploration, which has gotten worse because, I yes, I picked up um, an expensive card like Breach, but I think Exploration gets worse once you have the more Lotuses and Moxes you have. How does Displacer Kitten work here? So with the Basalt Monolith out, it's three mana every time you play a spell. Blinking Urza is pretty good, but that's about it. I guess Blinking Knight of Autumn is like kind of something. I'm just tempted to take Taiga because it casts Zerda and through the breach, and I'm already looking at cutting cards. Let's just take a land, make the deck more consistent. Oh, Lorien Reveal is perfect. I mean, it only gets blue, but that card is just a busted card. It's just an island that's a split card draw three is really, really strong. And when you can go fetch a dual land, it's even better. Even if I can't do that, I'm still pretty happy taking it. Note, we haven't passed up any small green creatures. It's looking less and less likely that I want this natural order in my deck. Now that I have Breach and Flash, I'm not that worried about having a way to use Emer or uh, Atroxa. So let's let's take these out for the time being. So now this is 18, 19, 20, 21 land. So yeah, now that's we've got some extra space. Oh, there's a Lion's Eye Diamond too. Yeah, if I slam Lion's Eye Diamond, and the Salvagers comes back, which at this point it really should. I'm the only person with both. Then I'll have multiple ways to win off that. Because also Salvagers is infinite mana. Chromatic Star, you draw infinite cards. Salvagers Lion's Eye isn't infinite mana. But uh, if you have a Chromatic Star, you can then get to draw your deck. Or again, Urza in play lets you win. And Salvagers Lotus lets you win a million different ways. Okay, so 
Here I'll just take a blue-green land. I don't really think I want Metamorph or any of the rest of these cards. All right, Salvagers. Unfortunately, this is blue-green land is not Lorien revealable, but that's okay. Yeah, this is looking great. I don't need that natural order stuff, I don't think at all. And if we if we wheel salvagers, I'll feel very good about this. I, I even if we don't, I think that this deck looks quite strong to me. But wheeling salvagers would uh, would certainly kick it up a notch. And I, again, I'd be a little surprised if it didn't. Maybe we'll wheel Tolaren Academy. I, I don't think so. I don't even want to get my hopes up for that because I don't think that's happening. All right, but let's see if this salvagers can come back. I would say it could salvage our draft, but no, the draft is actually just going great. I mean, even without it, we've got a couple infinites. There's the Salvagers. Of course, no Academy, but I didn't think that was coming back. And honestly, I don't even know. I think Salvagers might even be better for this deck than Academy, which is the crazy part. Now, we're basically set. Okay, so here... Oh, Trinket Mage looks pretty strong in this deck. Tamiyo is also good. If I get Displacer Kitten back, Tamiyo will, will have been good. I actually don't even really want Show and Tell. I'm just going to take Trinket Mage. I think Trinket Mage is awesome here. Don't think I want Bolus' Citadel. I guess I could take Touch the Spirit Realm. I'm not playing Restless Cottage. Sure. Uh, Triskelion doesn't do much for me. Neither does Life from the Loam, I don't think. Yeah, sure. I'll take a trike. I don't know. All right, so this is... I can't play Zerta as a companion because of Emrakul and Trinket Mage and Atroxa. So, not even close. But this is now 15 land plus Lorene Revealed and two Moxes is, is really like 18 lands plus Lotus, whatever you count that as. Lotus is kind of weird because, yes, of course it adds mana, but it also goes away. Oh, Scrubland is decent. This is Hardcast Atroxa plan here. My mana should be pretty good. My deck is basically all blue cards. Oh, I could probably cut this birds too. Let's take a look at what the mana looks like, but I'm actually not going to want early green mana for birds. And I just picked up a regrowth as an additional card to play, so I kind of like that instead. Oh, Fiery Islet and Sunbaked Canyon are probably getting in too. Let's take a look in deck building here, but pretty good chance that uh, I'm going to want to play all of those lands because I'm playing four colors I mean <clears throat> if you look at piles by color I'm playing all blue cards I have basically one white card one like red one red card one red white card and then two green cards and then Atrox and Dismember don't really count and then in terms of fixing I have basically a white blue land the scrub land doesn't really fix me for too much. And then a bunch of duels. All right, here, let's do go back to piles of my mana value. All right, so if I add six lands, yeah, I'll have 15 land plus two moxes, a Lorian reveal. That all sounds fine to me. There's no cards I really want to play in the sideboard. Okay, so looking at mana, right now, if I add, even if I don't add a planes, I'll have one, two, three, Four, five white sources, plus a talisman, a pentad prism, a chromatic star, and of course the lotus and lion's eye. <clears throat> uh, and then, so I don't really even need a planes here, because I only have the salvagers and zerta. For red, I have taiga, sunbaked canyon, fiery islet. So I have three red sources plus the additional, I'm not going to count LED, but plus Lotus, Chromatic Star, Pentad Prism. So it's like six red sources. And remember, Trinket Mage can get any of them, which is kind of nice. For blue, I have Lorien Revealed, Fiery Islet, plus these two blue-green lands. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm probably going to want like three islands or something like that. Don't need black. And then for green right now, even before adding a forest, one, two, three, four, and then the artifacts. All right, so what if I go like three, one, one, one? Like, I feel like this is enough blue, right? I mean, this is one, two, three islands is five more, or five total. 
Vine stock is six. Waterlog Grove seven. Seven blue sources plus Pentad Prism, Chromatic Star, Lotus, and Lorien revealed. So really eight blue sources off lands plus a couple more. Mm, I probably have too much green right now. One, two, three, four, five. Five green sources plus the, the three or four artifacts. Yeah, I can probably cut a forest for another island. I mean, I guess what I could also do is add a... is play the Birds of Paradise, but I think I'd rather not do that. And a mountain in a plane seems reasonable to make it a little more likely that I can play Zerda or play and activate uh, Oriok Salvagers in the same turn. Well, this deck's a banger, but I would hope so. Uh, when you open Mox Mox Lotus, I hope you end up with something good. I actually think this deck is very good. It is it is leveraging the fast mana very nicely. This deck is capable of a turn one kill. Wouldn't be easy, but land Lotus Salvagers, play Lion's Eye, Chromatic Star. That's it. That is enough. And, or <clears throat> Lotus... Um, let's see, how am I casting Kinnon or Basalt Monolith? I guess I have a Lotus and a Mox and play Kinnon or uh, <clears throat> Zerda and Basalt Monolith would do it. All right, this hand looks great. I'm going to lead on Library of Alexandria Go. Hope my opponent doesn't do anything to turn one that I have to deal with or it takes a card out of my hand. So I don't want to see Swamp, Duress you, or Inquisition you. Okay, Ketria Triumph is great. And then turn two, I drop to seven. Library up to eight. Play Razor Verge Thicket Pass. I haven't drawn a land yet, which is a little <clears throat> unfortunate. But now I actually think, well, we'll see what they do. But there's a chance if they don't play a creature that I want to stop on my upkeep. Oh, Lotus. A Lotus Mirror, because this is a league drafting, remember? Hopefully this is something I can dismember. Oh, it's a gold span dragon. <laughs> All right, well, they get a treasure out of the deal, but <clears throat> I spent one mana to kill their Lotus Tout play, so that was pretty nice. And then I draw off library and play island, and I just pass the turn because I have remand up now. I mean, this is just now going perfectly. I get to remand them, and then... Hopefully I end up uh, drawing something to flash in. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, yeah, we'll remand that. Remand when you've got library going is pretty nice. And now because I've drawn Lion's Eye, I don't need a library on upkeep or anything. So I have eight cards. Let's go to Mountain. Let's draw. What do I want to do here? I've got a lot of options. I have eight. I'll cast Talisman for sure. Do you want to cast Kinnon? I guess I could. Give them something to kill. And then if they don't deal with Kinnon, because I still have six cards in hand, so I'll be able to library on my next turn. And if they don't deal with Kinnon, I can draw out a Basalt Monolith. Not that actually does anything yet, because I don't have a, a, a mana sink for infinite mana. But it does make my Talisman tap for two mana, which is nice. So they're going to lead with Charter Course. Discard an island and play a fable. Yeah. All right. Fabled it up. And I just need to find an Emrakul and I would win, I think, pretty easily. Draw <laughs> Zerda. Not ideal. Um, I think I think I'm going to regrowth the remand. Oh, wait. Hold on. I can just tap the talisman. And... Play a Flooded Strand, play a Pentad Prism for two here. And then I'm just going to block the Goblin with Kinnon, because I don't think Kinnon does much for me. I have Zerda, which replaces it. I guess Kinnon lets me pay seven to activate it. <clears throat> Maybe that's better. Huh. Yeah, that gives me a lot of looks for Emrakul or Atroxa. Yeah, sure. They have a lot of mana. I'll, I'll take some more damage. Trinket Mage. Um, yeah, I'll remand that. I just want to draw cards. I have so many cards that win me the game from this spot that I think remanding here sounds pretty good. If they're going to recast it, then that's fine too. Okay. Trinket Mage. So we're just in the Emrakul or Atroxa waiting room at this point. 
Uh, salvagers would not actually do too much. Infinite mana doesn't actually do much for me. All right, let's draw a card. Oh, and there's a Troxa. Okay. So now I'm at 11. I think I just flash in the Atroxa. Because then if I find Emrakul, then I can breach Emrakul. So let's go flash. Atroxa. I'm not going to pay the mana. And, oh, I found Emrakul and Mana Drain. I found it all. All right. So let's get Basalt Monolith, Emrakul, Mana Drain, Scrubland. Sure. And done. Play Mox. I mean, this is easy now. Go Monolith, tap, untap, Emrakul. Yeah, they get the idea. Nice. All right. It <clears throat> took a second to find something, but once we did, it was pretty easy. Do I want Knight of Autumn in my deck against Fable, Lotus, Trinket Mage, Mox Opal? Kind of feels like once they have Mox Opal in their deck... Knight of Autumn is probably decent. And I can probably afford to cut a land on the draw here. But it's probably a little bit mana hungry. I mean, or heavy. I've got currently 14 lands plus two moxes and Lorien revealed, but then also Lotus, Lion's Eye, Chromatic Star, Prism, Talisman, that sort of thing. So we'll try this and uh, see where it goes. Dismember came in clutch there. And that, that was a pretty good Library of Alexandria game. I, I killed them on turn six, and I used Library on turns two, three, four, five, six. So five extra cards off my land. Library of Alexandria is a hell of a card. Um, what do I got here? Oh, well, this hand is a lot of mana very quickly here. Let's go... Taiga Go, I guess. <clears throat> So this hand's kind of interesting. I can get infinite mana pretty soon. Oh wow, they have Mox and Lotus. How lucky are they? Uh, I guess I go Island, Pearl, Basalt Monolith next turn. All right, Trinket Mage for Lotus here. Yeah. Oh, and they're sacking the Lotus. <laughs> That, I don't think that's a very good play. So what they did there is they basically could have just cast Fable, but instead they Trinket Mage for Lotus. They just made Trinket Mage a zero mana 2-2. Two -two. I think you can do better with that usually. <laughs> so I have infinite mana in multiple ways here. So I'm going to cast the Basalt Monolith and then pass. And next turn, if they don't kill the Basalt Monolith... I'm probably just going to go land Zerda, because I don't have double blue for Kinnon and Time Twister in the same turn. And I'll cast Zerda with an island up, get infinite mana, and then cast Time Twister and hope to draw Emrakul or Lotus into a play. So I kind of want them to tap out for something that doesn't kill my Basalt Monolith. Bribery my Emrakul, huh? going to make it a little harder. Turn 3 bribery is pretty good. So what is my win condition? Oh, they got a Troxa? Okay, sure. Don't hit Forcible, please. They didn't. The Black Lotus was revealed from an earlier thing. Okay, they hit Mox Opal, but it doesn't provide mana right now. True Name, Mana Leak, Mana Vault. Wow, their deck is good. Mm, I'm going to get infinite mana with Zerda, and now there's a Emrakul in my deck that if I draw it, then that is just game. All right, they didn't play anything. I can go look at what they have later, but it doesn't really matter because I'm about to time twister here. Um, so let's go Zerda. I'm going to play Sunbaked Canyon, actually, because... That's an extra draw towards something. I think that's better than than having uh, any other mana up. I think the extra draw is good. All right, I'm going to make a little bit more mana. I mean, the only reason that I need to make a bunch of mana now is because if they drew... I guess there's no instant... They, don't, they can't cast Snuff out, right? All right, so that's probably enough mana then. Time Twister... 
And we didn't hit Emrakul, but we hit Memory Jar and a bunch of mana sources. All right, so let's go Mox. Oh, and a Regrowth. Oh, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> uh, Talisman, Memory Jar, and we drew a green Talisman. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's what I can do. Here's what I can do. All right, let's make some more mana here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Regrowth on Time Twister. And on the stack, I'm going to sack uh, <laughs> Lion's Eye. And I could also sack Memory Jar. Is that good to do? Uh, so what are my two options here? This is weird. I can either cast Time Twister with Memory Jar in play, or my hand isn't anything I care about. So I think it's actually better to regrowth the time twister in response, crack the jar. Cause then when I time twister jar can go back. So it's response, oh wait, hold on. Response crack the lion's eye for blue and then crack the jar. Okay. Oh, and I drew the Emrakul and now the time twister comes back to my hand but it doesn't matter. Cause now I cast Emrakul and this is pretty Emra cool of me. <laughs> uh, and that'll do it. Wow, that was a sick turn three play against someone else who had a pretty awesome deck. So that is a, that is the cube experience sometimes. And this was a pretty fun one. All right, let's get to our next match. That was sick. Also, I couldn't decide on sick or sweet, so I said sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, okay. This hand is very close to winning. <laughs> if it if I draw a black lotus I win. I mean, that's not that's kind of a dumb thing to say sometimes, but it's true. Atroxa lets me cast Flash. And if I get Kinnon or Zerda, then I have the Basalt Monolith Emrakul combo. So basically I have cards from four different combos. And well, depending on how you count Emrakul, I guess. And then I have a remand that'll help get me there, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Any black lotuses? So the question is, if I draw a mox this turn, do I try to play a basalt monolith on turn two? I guess it doesn't come up. Pass the turn here. Presumably they're not cracking petal and end of turn. Wow. I guess I'll remand that because I don't really want to remand with it in play. That's not even a very good play, honestly. Like. Putting a Fairy Mastermind into play at the cost of a Lotus, but it'll just wait a turn. It's not like Fairy Mastermind does that much for you. But I certainly don't want to cast Remand when Fairy Mastermind's already in play, so I guess I would rather do counter it there. Remand with the sick two for one there. Kills a Lotus Petal. Now they play a Wall of Omens, sure. Okay. Lotus for the for the instant win. Oh, Atroxa. Mm. I'm going to play Basalt Monolith first. I feel like if I wait one turn, I can flash Atroxa and win. Part of the problem with casting flash Atroxa now is I think I run the risk of just discarding a bunch. I don't really want to do that. Yes, they have mana up now, but I don't think they have anything like too awesome to play or they wouldn't have uh, played Wall of Omens instead. The other thing is, when they have blue plus white up, not double blue in cube, if I cast flash with a basalt monolith on tap, they can't counter it. They can remand it, they can mana leak it, they can miscalculate it, they can't counter it. I mean, they have force of will as a, as a potential, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm gonna tap the monolith here to cast flash. See what they, what they think. All right, I'm gonna put an Atrox into play. And what do we got? So no black lotus, but I got Artifact, instant land, sorcery. So let's take instant and sorcery. Artifact, I guess, pearl and land. I think against them, I'd actually rather have fiery islet over mountain. Then I'm going to play the fiery islet, play the pearl, and I'm just going to cast through the breach. And we'll see if this if this works out. Because if it does, I get to Ember cool them down to just a Fairy Mastermind. Because what they should do is float the mana and then Fairy Mastermind uh, in res after, the, after the Annihilator trigger resolves. But 
I'm fine. I think I can beat a fairy mastermind. Yeah, looks like I can. All right. Well, that was game one. That was pretty good. This deck does some cool stuff. Do I want Voice of Resurgence? Like, in general, that's a card I would want to side in against control decks. But I don't know how many counters they have yet. Uh, I could see taking out a land on the draw. I think, again, I think this deck... I'm fine with the amount of lands it's playing in the main deck. I don't actually want to change that. But when I know I'm on the draw, I think I can go down one. Ooh, baby. This is a fast kill. I mean... It's not a guaranteed kill getting infinite mana and casting Time Twister, but it's pretty close. It's hard to miss on that. So here's the question. What do I do on turn one? I guess I don't have white on turn two if I crack the Lotus. So I think I'm going to do is go uh, Island Go. Turn two, I'm going to play Fiery Islet and Pentad Prism. And then turn three, I'm going to try to go for Salvagers, mana, and all that. We'll see... We'll see what they do. Okay, Pentad Prism off blue red. And if you counter it, you counter it. Sacking. <laughs> My opponent really loves sacking Lotus Petal to make plays that really aren't worth sacking Lotus Petal for. I guess if they're stuck on lands here, they really want to draw. Oh, well, they found an Ancestral. That's pretty good. But sacking Lotus Petal to Reprieve is kind of the reverse of what happened in game one and still, like, not a play I'd be happy to make, I'll say. So now, <laughs> Ancestral and didn't draw land. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to go for it here. Let's see. I cast Oriox Salvagers. And if this gets countered, I can play a Pentad Prism and kind of go from there. If it doesn't, then we've got infinity mana. Okay. Get back Lotus. Play Lotus. Okay, add white. Get back Lotus. So the question is, what do I play first? I think what I do is I cast an Urza pretty soon because... That's just showing them a win condition because Urza Salvager's Lotus is uh, infinite Urza spin. So at some point I'll spin and hit Emrakul. Okay, sack this for blue, cast Urza. Okay, Salvager's Lotus, Lotus. And then I think once I spin Urza once, because I, I unfortunately don't have to time twister here. Once I spin Urza once, I think that'll probably do the trick. Uh, it's funny, the loop with Lion's Eye is actually a little faster when you have Urza in play because you can tap the Lion's Eye for mana. Lion's Eye doesn't tap to sack, which is kind of funny, which means you can tap it to Urza and do that instead. All right, let's get back Lotus. Lotus. Tap this for blue. Urza. Hit Talisman, Lotus. I mean, I'm just gonna keep doing this. So I'll let my opponent decide how many how many loops they wanna they wanna see. I don't mind. I get to spin Urza a bunch. That's pretty fun. Oh, they figured it out. All right. Well, that's a quick 2-0. Let's see if we can speed run our way to a three and zero. Alrighty, time for game three or round three. I am on the draw here and uh, excited to see my opening hand. You know, uh, when you get to open well and your deck comes together nicely and you get sweet draws, like, it can be pretty fun to just, like, roll people in magic. I will say that. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this is a totally fine hand. We have turn two mana drain on the draw, which might not be good enough. If they go mountain swift spear or something, then I'm not going to feel great about my chances. But then I get to cast Trinket Mage for Lotus and I might be able to do something like Lotus, sack it for green, regrowth it, leaving a green floating, sack it for black, and then I have blue and white mana from my lands. Boom, Atroxa. That could be good. Ooh, tapped overgrown tomb. Is this the least scary turn one play in all of cube? It's pretty close, right? Like, turn one tapped overgrown tomb. It's like, I don't have duress, I don't have thoughts, these are not birds of paradise, and I'm playing two colors which are just not that interactive or fast. 
all right, well, now things are looking a little better for my opponent. Now now they have a bunch of mana. They have a mox. I'm going to probably play something pretty decent here. All right. So it's funny. Normally I would be like, oh, no, turn two grist, but I don't think this deck cares that much about it. Oh, they milled a thespian stage. Nice. Their deck looks sweet. Oh, I drew flash. <laughs> now we're really talking. Okay, so there's a pretty good chance I can win on my next turn. I mean, maybe that's overstating it, but if I mana drain something here and then untap, tap one island plus use a mana floating to cast Flash and then flash in Atroxa with Trinket Mage for Lotus, it feels like there's a pretty decent chance. Oh, wow, Dark Depths, huh? Okay, I'll take one. So the question now is if they don't do anything, do I end of turn Flash? I guess I probably do. Huh... The problem is I have five cards in hand after that, and I would, let's say, draw five, go to 10 cards, 11 cards. I might have to discard, but I'm not... The Thespian stage getting milled means I'm not even scared of, like, a crop rotation win. I'm not scared. I think I actually... I'll just wait another turn. And then now I can still Mana Drain into Flash, and I think that they're not doing anything... So, and I don't really care that their Planeswalker is ticking up. So, a Wasteland. You're really going to Wasteland my, my sack land? I don't think so. I mean, maybe you are. If I tap out, almost assuredly they're going to. Like if I cast Flash end of turn. I don't mind that too much. Especially since now I have to cast Flash because I don't have a land to play next turn. Um, I mean, unless they cast something here, of course. Okay, I'll, I'll cast Flash then. Put Atroxa into play. Mm -hmm. And Atroxa... I didn't hit Black Lotus, but I hit Creature Land Instant Artifact. So, land, I think I take Flooded Strand. I, I, I could take Kinnon Basalt Monolith. The awkward part is I don't have green yet, but I guess I can Trinket Mage for Lotus. An instant, do I want Remand or Through the Breach? I guess I want Remand here. So if I don't take Kinnon... You know what? Actually, I, the Salvagers plan is better. Why don't I just take Salvagers and Mox Jet? Yeah, that's got to be way better. Because then I can take Mox Jet instead of taking uh, the Basalt Monolith. Okay, so now... They didn't wasteland my fiery islet. Hmm. I'm a little surprised by that, to be honest. Flooded strand. Crack this. I guess I'll get planes. I don't actually want to get scrubland here. And I'll cast trinket mage. Targeting or tapping those, so now they can't wasteland me. I mean they can, but I don't I don't care if they do. I still think they should have wastelanded me after flash resolved, but I'm gonna go get black lotus here. And I think I do play the Lotus. I have Regrowth if I really need to. And I have Mana Drain and Remand to help protect it. I just think having double counter up is probably better than not. All right, I will pass. Are they going to crack their Silent Clearing? No, they're going to Wasteland me. See, look, if they were going to Wasteland me, they really should have done it when I was tapped out. They just let me tap it for mana. Timing is, timing is everything. And, uh, you know, magic's tricky. I have them pretty much locked out here because next turn I'm going to get infinite mana with mana drain back up and then cast... I don't even need to cast Time Twister. Actually, I'll regrowth Atroxa, cast Atroxa, and that'll probably find me a dub. Their deck looks sweet. From everything they've played, their deck actually looks pretty sweet. I draft decks like that a lot. Uh, maybe a little outmatched against the Lotus Triple Power deck <laughs> with a bunch of infinite combos. All right. They mill... A Terra Sunder. Ooh, that would have been a good one. And now, what are they going to cast here? Regrowth on Thespian Stage. Let's mana drain the regrowth. I don't care if they know I have mana drain. I assume they're not going to attack here. It doesn't seem like it really accomplishes too much. All right, <laughs> I drew the Basalt Monolith anyway. Um... I get two mana off of uh, that, and I can even remand a Swords to Plowshares here. I guess I can't remand 
snuff out. At least it doesn't really do much to remand snuff out. But I think that's okay. So I would like my two mana here. I think countering the Regolith was fine. Maybe I didn't need to do it, but felt like having two mana up. I mean, I guess I don't even need the mana either. I don't know, whatever. I mean, maybe, maybe it was... Well, actually, no, it was good to manage it. Because right now I don't have enough mana to cast and activate Salvagers with with having a counterspell up. Except that I got the two mana from managing because the Razor Verge Thicket is a tap land right now. Which is definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, sack this for white. Cast Salvagers. Okay. Salvagers Lotus. Lotus, sack it for white. So now I get to Salvagers. I get to, have to, Salvagers a little bit here. Um, just keep the graveyard from moving around here. And then I'm gonna regrowth. Now I have enough mana that I can regrowth a Troxa. And yeah, that maybe that prompt a concession, maybe not, I don't know. Regrowth a Troxa. Salvagers, Lotus. All right, and a couple loops here, and then I'm gonna cast a Troxa, and they get to go, They it's reasonable of them to also wait to see what's in my deck before conceding here, but let's just Lotus a few times, and then I have to get black and blue mana, because I have blue already for my islands. Sack for black, get back Lotus again. Lotus and cast Atroxa. Atroxa, boom, boom. Hit Urza and Bankbuster and land and breach. Sure, why not? Sack for white. Salvagers. Lotus Salvagers, and I think my next play is probably Urza, it would, would be my guess. And then once I get Urza down, I can start spinning with Urza, and once I do that, I, maybe I'll hit an Emrakul. I was hoping to hit Emrakul off a of Troxa, because that would have just made things a little bit easier, but this is okay. I can't cast Urza quite yet. Let's get to Lotus, Sack for Blue. Urza, Lord High Artificer. Get back Lotus. And we're about to start spinning with Urza here. I guess I haven't even played a land yet. Not that I need a land for any particular reason. I was just remarking. I guess this is turn five. Okay. Okay, let's spin Urza. Dismember, sure, we'll dismember an insect, why not? Salvagers my lotus. Okay, they they had enough. Good, good, good. Alright, so playing against green black. Mm, I think I'll just not even side in the side out the land for anything. It doesn't feel like I saw anything that would warrant it. I think we are good to go. They can side in their cards that are good against my good cards, but there's just not that not that much you can do. Like, what what card could they have in their sideboard that they would want? Oh, this is close close to a turn one kill. Well, even with Salvagers, it's not a turn one kill because if you use Lines Eye, you discard your hand. But obviously, I'm not going to mulligan this hand, and I have Library, so this hand is just great. <laughs> hand is great, decks the great. So. Put them all to six. And they played a shell dock. So what is not that I need anything, because this hand is, is is obviously just like I'm not asking for more. I'm just curious, what would be the best draw? I guess if I drew um hold on, let me think. So they're playing black. So that makes me want to play the lotus. But they're also playing green, which makes me want to hold the lotus. They have like Terra Sunder. Let's just pass. It's always a debate. If they're, if they're blue black, play your lotuses when they're you know as fast as possible. If they're green white, keep them in hand. But there's no green mana here. I thought this would be a Thalia. That that would have been a six sideboard card. Oh, there's the Salvagers. So 
I can't actually win this turn. Because I can play Salvagers, I can get infinite mana, but I have to discard my hand to do it. So I think what I'm going to do is play Lion's Eye and then pass. And then next turn, I should have a turn three kill if I find a land. I could have played Lotus to have Romanda, but I, I think I would rather not expose the Lotus and just go for the turn three here. It's not like I need to do it any other particular way. And then I have the Urza, so that's it's just obviously an instant win once the Salvagers get going. If I drew Chromatic Star this turn, I would have gone for it, because then I'd just win with Salvagers Chromatic Star. But this works. Oh man, are they going to Prismatic Ending my Lion's Eye? That would be so sick, because I can't sack it. <laughs> or are they just going to kill it like the old-fashioned way? We'll see. They have green and black mana now, but... I suspect it's going to be pretty difficult for them to win this game. Okay, another Talisman. And pass. Let's draw. Okay, I drew the land. Lotus. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast Salvagers here. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> and they're done. <laughs> And they are done. Uh, that was that was the fastest concede I've seen. Uh, I, I got to take a look at that deck, though. That deck was just absurd. So <laughs> this deck, I mean, besides the fact that it had Black Lotus, Mox Jet, Mox Pearl, and Lion's Eye. Lion's Eye is a powerful card in its own right. It, it had so many combos. I haven't actually drafted a deck quite like this before. So I, let's just count the combos because... The, oh, I can't move cards around at this point. That's fine. Uh, we have Zerda and Kinnan plus Basalt Monolith. Infinite mana combo. Kind of number one and two because it takes... It always takes Basalt, but I have two pieces that can join with it. Then we have Oriac Salvagers plus Black Lotus for infinite mana and cast whatever you want and win. Did that. Or Lion's Eye for infinite mana, but you have to discard your hand, which still wins off Chromatic Star or Urza in play or if you have like a Jar in play or something, right? Or if you get infinite mana and you can activate Kinnon a bunch of times, that also probably... No, that does the trick, because if you have a Kinnon in play, Lion's Eye still gets mana infinite or any color, and then, oh, you can't get Urza, but you can activate it until you hit a Troxa. At that point, you should probably win. It also has Flash a Troxa, just the one thing to flash in, but that's fine, or Through the Breach plus a Troxa or Emrakul. Emrakul is also the cleanest win condition with infinite mana. Urza just generally provides mana and is an infinite mana sink. And then it has Time Twister and Memory Jar as ways to, once you're doing all this stuff, just draw a ton of cards. Oh, what a beautiful deck. Obviously, it had to open really well to have it happen, but also drafted a pretty sweet deck. It came together really nicely. This deck was really fun to play, as you no doubt saw. Well, I can't top that, so that'll do it for today. We, we, we don't need any more action. <laughs> but good news. Tomorrow, there will be more action. Got a new draft coming up tomorrow. So as always, I appreciate you watching as I try to assemble infinite mana one way or the other. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for yet another cube draft. Good times, good times.